G'day guys, Ziggy D here with the build guide for my Vortex Cold Snapper Cultist, updated for 3.6. If you saw my betrayal videos, you've no doubt already seen this build in action and seen just how strong it is. I've done pretty much everything in the game on it, including Deathless Uber Elder, all maps and deep delves including the All Boss. It's one of my favourite builds in recent leagues and is just a beautiful playstyle with some great damage, survivability and crazy quality of life. And even though it's Chaos Inoculation Energy Shield, it's still a great league starter thanks to how strong ES is these days and how well Occultist works on budget Energy Shield gear. This build focuses on cold damage over time which saw greatly improved support in 3.5 with new scaling stats on both passives and gear, as well as big buffs to Occultist for the archetype. We use the three biggest sources of cold damage over time in the game, Cold Snap, Vile Cold Snap and Vortex. You can stack the damage from all three of these skills on top of each other and then apply several layers of debuffs to enemies to lower their cold resistance and make them take increased cold damage. This all combines together to be some very, very nice damage. The survivability is granted by, in part, a large pool of energy shields. I have 11,000 with solid endgame gear and huge amounts of energy shield regen and recovery from the occultist nodes. On an occultist, energy shield recharge cannot be interrupted once it begins, and we stack effects that improve this recharge. In addition to this, up to 30% energy shield regen while clearing, and the focus skill that restores flat energy shield all give us a ton of sustain. And thanks to high mobility and a damage over time playstyle, and chill and freeze, we can run rings around some of the scarier stuff in the game quite easily. So if you want to start Synthesis League off with something well tested and confirmed solid, then this is my recommended choice. You'll level up the build using Freeze Pulse, Ice Nova or really just about any skill until Act 2, where you can pick up and start using Cold Snap. I recommend straight away getting a Vile Cold Snap from Trade if you can, or Viling a gem, I guess if you're feeling ambitious. Do that as soon as possible as its swirling effect does a ton of damage and will improve your leveling. In Act 3 you can get Vortex and you can weave it into your gameplay quite easily. It's an instant cast skill, so you can use it to kill enemies while simply running, you don't have to stop. Or you can even use it while casting other spells. Leveling is done as life with some extra energy shield sprinkled on top, and you swap over to Chaos Inoculation and Full Energy Shield once you get to around level 70, once you've completed the Merciless Labyrinth. Contrary to popular belief, you do not need amazing energy shield gear to swap to CI. Early endgame, low level 70s gear with some energy shield rolls are enough because of all the flat energy shield available on the occultist and the passive tree nowadays. When swapping to CI, you just want to aim for the following and you'll be fine. 350 to 400 energy shield on a chest piece. Around 200 on a helmet is fine, you can even just use Rhyme Gaze unique. And about 200 on a shield. 50 or so energy shield on your gloves and boots will help, but it's not really a big deal early on. That's kind of late game optimization to try and get high energy shield on your gloves and boots. If you can manage to swap to CI with 5 to 6,000 energy shield at level 70, then you'll be fine to start endgame. Though it's not difficult to end up with much more than this. In 3.5, I was close to about 7,000 energy shield with self crafted gear when I first swapped to CI. If you want more detail on the leveling tree, check the description of this video for the path of building link, but it's fairly simple. You just want to rush to Elemental Overload as a big damage boost, just like most spellcaster builds, picking up some life and damage along the way. Then head over and route out the shadow area, grabbing more life and damage, and setting up your tree for your later swap to CI. I've included leveling trees you can follow, and then a final CI tree for endgame. When you swap over to CI, just grab the majority of the energy shield nodes, respecting out of life, and picking up the Chaos Inoculation node. This right here is the new endgame tree I've worked out for 3.6. It's changed a bit since 3.5 because of buffs to certain passives and some new clusters that we can use now. It gets about the same energy shield as before and gained some damage overall. The tree is overall kind of simple, it's basically just a big web of damage and energy shield. You can of course, as with any build guide, feel free to tinker with things to your liking. For the Ascendancy we get the extremely powerful defensive nodes Wicked Ward and Vile Bastion which basically make you a CI god with a ton of sustain, extra flat energy shield and stun immunity. And then we can get Void Beacon, a huge resistance stripping effect to nearby enemies, which is basically your vortex range so it's easy to work into the build. And then Frigid Wake, which is more damage, survivability and immunity to chill and freeze. Occultus is kind of insane in the way that it deals with the two main problems of CI, stun and freeze, just on those nodes. 
In terms of skills, we use Vortex as our main six link, supported by Hypothermia, Efficacy, Controlled Destruction, Concentrated Effect, and Bone Chill. You can swap Concentrated Effect for Increased Area of Effect if you prefer for clear speed. Early on, Vial Cold Snap can be socketed into Rhyme Gaze Helmet to create a pseudo 5 link, linked with Controlled Destruction, Efficacy and Increased Area of Effect, and you get the Concentrated Effect from the helmet itself. Long term though, I found it better to craft a pair of gloves with socketed gems deal 30% more damage over time, and a plus 1 to socketed AoE gems, and then I socketed Vial Cold Snap in these with Concentrated Effect, Controlled Destruction and Efficacy. I still use Rhyme Gaze to this day because it's hard to actually beat, even though I tried to craft a bunch of ES helmets. The cold damage on it and a decent amount of energy shield just make it a pretty solid choice all around. You could eventually swap into a really nice fossil crafted ES helmet that also has that lowering of cold resistance to nearby enemies, but it's pretty difficult to actually make one good enough. Frost Bomb is used to lower enemy cold resistance and can be linked to increased duration and spell cascade to give it excellent coverage and uptime. Flame Dash, faster casting and arcane surge for mobility and a small extra buff. Discipline Aura is of course mandatory and Frostbite Blasphemy further increases the damage nearby enemies will take. An Immortal Call setup is always recommended. I use increased duration phase run and Immortal Call for quality of life and defense. Keep in mind that in an ES item, this is four off colors. So you may need to use Verici to socket this item or use a slightly different setup until you can. To further debuff enemies, I use Stormbrand socketed within Malachi's Artifice Unique Ring. This hits the enemy with lightning damage and procs Elemental Equilibrium, lowering their cold resistance by a whopping 50%. You could use the Elemental Equilibrium passive keystone instead of Malachi's Artifice if you wanted to. Just be aware that Cold Snap and Vortex both hit enemies, so you'll increase their cold resistance whenever they get hit by these skills which means you'll need to then be very vigilant about using Stormbrand or Orb of Storms to once again lower their cold resistance. It's kind of awkward and I don't really recommend it over Malachi's Artifice. You can also use your choice of Golem if you want to, but it's really not that necessary. As an extra non-gem related skill, I highly recommend crafting the Energy Shield Recovery Focus skill on your chest. It's one of the Syndicate mods. It's an instant heal of 20 to 30% of your energy shield depending on the tier, and it's hugely useful thanks to its instant cast speed. It's effectively an instant healing energy shield potion. And then finally, as a long term goal, you can eventually aim to get an aspect of the spider item like my ring here. This slows nearby enemies and makes them take increased damage. The only awkwardness here is the mana reservation gets very high, so you'll need to get some mana reservation reduction from items or the tree if you want to run Aspect of the Spider alongside Discipline and Blasphemy Frostbite. It's not mandatory at all, but it is a pretty good long-term goal, just to boost your damage a little bit further. Now here's a look at my endgame gear. Most of this I crafted myself using fossils and master crafting. Both for early endgame and late endgame, fossil crafting is fantastic for energy shield gear. Your priorities on your armor pieces are high energy shield and enough resistances to get you capped. Your chest, helmet and shield are the most important slots for energy shield. Your next priority is to make sure you get some decent move speed on your boots of course. You don't need to worry as much about energy shield on gloves and on your boots. And then kind of your last priority for most of your gear besides your weapon is supplemental damage buffing. You'll actually see I don't really have much damage on my jewelry. Rhyme Gaze for the helmet is a very solid choice, and a 5 link chest will get you by for your main damage setups in the early and even in the late endgame. For your weapon, you'll want high spell cold damage and cold damage over time multiplier. Cast speed is not actually a DPS boost in this build because it's a damage over time build, so it's not really necessary, but it is kind of nice quality of life to have. For flasks, I run a granite flask with shock removal, a basalt flask with staunching, a quartz flask with curse immunity, and a go fast quicksilver. I've also been using Cinder Swallow as a bit of an extra survivability boost, but it's pretty optional. It honestly might actually be better to get another utility flask, whatever you want, with Ignite Immunity, as Ignites kind of suck on CI. Though alternatively you can just use the upgraded Soul of Aberrath Pantheon Power, which can help with Ignites as well. On Jewels, you're looking for Energy Shield, Faster Start of Energy Shield Recovery, Spell, Area or Cold Damage Scaling, and Resistances if you need some extra. And now finally, some quick tips for the playstyle. You'll want to clear enemies just by running through packs and instant casting your vortex. Cold snap packs that look a bit too dangerous to run through, or that are further away from your character that you don't want to manually run over to. You do more damage in this build if you stand nearby monsters because of the different resistance stripping effects. 
You can fast clear with Vile Cold Snap if you just activate it, hit your move speed flask and just run through packs as fast as you can. It feels pretty nice to use. For bosses, you want to place down your Storm Brands and they'll auto attach and debuff the bosses constantly. And then just keep your Frost Bomb up while you Vortex and Cold Snap them. Use your Focus skill liberally when you take damage to keep your ES full. And then if Focus is on cooldown and you take a bunch of damage, back off for a couple of seconds and your recharge will kick in pretty quickly. Hope you guys love this build as much as I have. I couldn't really stop playing it last league and when I tried to play some other builds, it kind of made my other builds feel like garbage in comparison. So that's kind of the downside of this build. That's it for now, guys. Have fun in 3.6. I'll see you guys there. I'm Ziggy D, and thanks for watching.